Remember that one time you pressed delete on a file you thought was unnecessary only to realize seconds later that you needed it? Now imagine doing that, but on a grand scale. Deleting a whole production database. This is fine. Sounds like an absolute nightmare, right? What's the problem? Well, this isn't just a hypothetical horror story to give tech enthusiasts chills in the middle of the night. It's a true story, and it happened to one of the most respected organizations in the coding world, GitLab. Stick around and you'll learn how a simple action spiraled into a catastrophic event but more importantly, how they handled the crisis and learned from it. The eventful evening. It was a typical day at GitLab, at least for a company that operates fully remotely, a day that ended in a disaster for a particular team member. Let's call him team member one. All was well until 6 p.m. when he was called back due to a high database load. The total number of snippets was rising dramatically, prompting suspicions of a spam attack not uncommon in GitLab's recent history. This issue, similar to an overflowing dam, created an increasingly high number of locks in the database. The engineers acting as the emergency repair crew scrambled to block spam IPs and delete spam users, but despite their efforts, the alarm bells didn't stop ringing. The mystery of the replication lag. The next alarm was more serious. It was for database replication lag. GitLab, for those not in the know, operates with a primary database and a secondary replica. When users write to the primary database, the data is replicated in the secondary one. This replication process, however, hit a snag. More than four gigabytes of data in the primary database failed to replicate in the secondary one. This was uncharted territory with no documentation available for the issue. The task of resolving it became a daunting one. Team member one, the unsung hero of the day, decided to help his team tackle this unfamiliar problem. The downfall begins. As the night dragged on, the engineers decided to attempt a risky procedure. The plan was to use a PostgreSQL command called postgres -based backup to create a backup from the live database. The existing incomplete data on the secondary database was to be wiped clean, and the primary database's data was to be copied onto it. Sounds like a plan, right? But then, something strange happened. The Postgres base backup command, when executed, seemed to hang and do nothing. In an attempt to fix the perceived bug, the team decided to remove any files that might be interfering with the command. The critical error. And then the unthinkable happened. Surprise. Team member one, in a moment that would haunt him for a while, accidentally ran the deletion command on the live production database. By the time he realized his mistake, it was too late. A considerable chunk of the data, more than 300 gigabytes, was lost. Suddenly, GitLab found itself without any data in its production database servers. The safety net was gone, and the floor had disappeared beneath them. The race against time. What followed was a scramble to find a copy of the production data. Unfortunately, the database backups were nowhere to be found on S3. There were no disk snapshots and no logical volume snapshots or backups of the file system. It was as if GitLab was standing in an endless desert of lost data. In a stroke of luck, a snapshot from a staging database captured six hours before the incident was found. But this relief came with a catch. Restoring the data from the snapshot was a painfully slow process due to data transfer limitations. And agonizing 18 hours later, GitLab was finally back up, but not without some casualties. The aftermath. All the data created in the six hours between the snapshot and the outage was permanently lost. This affected around 5,000 projects, 5,000 comments, and 700 users. But the team didn't shy away from transparency during this crisis. The progress of the recovery process was shared publicly, and they even had a recovery stream on YouTube. It was later discovered that the replication lag was actually caused by a background job trying to delete a GitLab employee's account that had been reported for abuse. It turned out their backup server was running the wrong version of PostGreeze and wasn't properly configured for domain-based message authentication reporting and conformance authentication, meaning any failure warnings were never received. Key takeaways. So what's the moral of this epic, somewhat tragic tale? For one, 
it emphasized the importance of having a second pair of eyes. Having someone review the commands you're running could be the difference between a normal day and a full-blown catastrophe. Moreover, the incident underlines the importance of thorough testing and documentation. If the replication lag scenario had been tested or better documented, the team might have recognized that Postgres-based backup hanging for a bit was normal and avoided the chaos that ensued. And then there's the matter of backup procedures. If your procedures aren't regularly and rigorously tested, you may find out too late that they're broken or insufficient. The assumptions made by GitLab about their recovery story proved to be costly. Finally, consider how operations are performed on your platform. GitLab's synchronous deletion of user data, for instance, should have been asynchronous and controlled to avoid overloading the system. And so, as the dust settled, the GitLab team emerged from the crisis stronger and wiser. Team member one, while initially feeling the weight of the world on his shoulders, was not blamed for the incident. Remove the stone of shame. It was understood that it was not his mistake alone. From the CEO to the new interns, everyone at GitLab took it as a learning experience. They picked up their tools, patched up their systems, and moved on, ensuring they would never accidentally delete their production database ever again. After all, it's not about how we fall, but how we rise that truly defines us. Remember, in the world of tech, where the margin for error can often be minuscule, it's essential to have reliable safeguards and practices in place, and even more crucial to learn, adapt, and improve when things do go wrong, because it's from our biggest mistakes that we learn our greatest lessons. Isn't that what coding and indeed life is all about? So until next time, happy coding.